Hi, I'm playing Forza Motorsport 7 today, and I had talked in another video about playing the NASCAR tracks. So today, that's what I'm going to do. Here we are, NASCAR. I put the difficulty up because actually it was getting a little bit easy. All right, it's all loaded up, ready to go. I don't play a lot of NASCAR on these games as much, so I'm actually really enjoying this. It's, I think, four or five tracks, and it's pretty realistic. I like to play from the driver's seat. It's quite the thing. You're kind of just riding on everyone else's wind, like the the draft break the wind for you because there's really not a lot of hairpin turns or anything where you can get ahead I almost took that guy's paint go way down low I'm sure that's been done before so I'm using a controller this game it excels at using a controller and does not work very well with the wheel whoa that guy hit his brakes that's dangerous. You know when people do that on the freeway? That's very dangerous. What is he thinking? Anyway, you may have noticed in comparison to some of my other videos, my beard is very long and I just let it go, you know? And I wasn't sure why I was doing it at the time, but now I'm starting to think, you know, I have a lot of late packages because, you know, I'm an eBay seller. And, um,. A lot of them, you know, there's a big sickness going around and a lot of them are late and um, up to 20 days so I figured you know I was gonna go shave and I thought you know I'm not gonna shave until these packages make it to their destination until I get everything I ordered until everyone who ordered for me gets what they have coming with their package and uh, some of the tracking is just hung up like they're not even and then you do a research case and they just close it and it's because they have to and they don't have any choice um, you know, there's that, uh, there's a lot of diseases going around, and from what I've heard is there, you know, I should have put the difficulty up higher here. Look at this, I'm way out front. It's not even a race. But I, I hear that they're shutting down the machines that the, with the conveyor belts and all that, and um, like they take out the whole unit. From uh, per, what I heard from a person I spoke to at the Postal Service, um, here in Michigan, things are pretty rough. So, there's really not much anyone can do about it, other than the people who are healthy and showing up to work. So, um, I don't really don't have any solid answers for anyone. Um, this is this video is being made December 2020. So, if you're watching this later, I'm sure there will be further developments in the news and things like that that you can. Um, apply to the situation, but this is um, coming up on the holiday season at the end of the year tax season um, December 2020 so That's where we're at today and uh, So as soon as all the packages are finally I'm sure there's gonna be a drop in the amount of orders there will be less orders and things will be easier to ship because there won't be this huge influx of orders and a lot of people are staying home and they're not wanting to go out for many reasons not only just because of diseases but also just because it's easier and now you have two reasons to stay home and then that really that pushed me over the edge it's like am I gonna go to the store even right down the street and I thought you know I don't really want to I just think it just just order they'll get their orders probably if they know how to do it So I like this game though, and um, I've been kind of just slowly pecking away at it, just playing an hour here and there. I don't actually don't want to just blow through it. It's it's like it's too enjoyable. And in fact, this was the big game when Xbox was released, the Xbox One X, and I'm now just playing it. But considering that the new systems don't really have a whole lot of games for them that are enhanced yet there you have just a handful it makes sense to just 
enjoy the console you have a bit. You know, and people are fighting over those PS5s and the the Xbox Series X, and I don't even think it's worth it. They don't have games. There's no games for it yet. I mean, there's a few. If you want to sit down with with one of the games and fill your time with that one, that's cool. But there's just plenty of time to play these games. And the games they are going to release or have released, a lot of times they're not really worked on completely yet. Like uh, Cyberpunk, which I don't play. I wasn't really impressed with it. I thought uh, to walk through the world would be fun. But I wasn't really thinking it would be necessarily my style of game playthrough, so I just kind of skipped it. And um, but they're they're running the PS4 Pro version on the PS5 with a higher frame rate, so it is nice. It's kind of like if you got a computer, you could run the same frame rate, or you could run the same resolution with a higher frame rate. So that's neat. But there there's no option for high fidelity 30 FPS. And maybe they're testing the market and seeing if everybody complains, you know, because because they're usually putting out the best resolution with a lower frame rate. And maybe they're testing the market by just saying 60 FPS and we'll give you what we got. But I think it's it's not necessarily optimized for the PS5. It's really more optimized for the previous gen, and they're just putting it on there and letting it run full out. So. I don't know, it gets complicated. Between that and PCs, it gets complicated because there's benefits to both. I have both and I like both. Like right now I'm playing on the Xbox One X and it's solid. It's totally solid. I'm, I'm looking at 4K, 60. I have a huge projection I'm playing on. I'm on YouTube. Although I do have all these lights in my face, which is just, it's, they're bright and they're big and it's like, wow. So that's the only downside here, you know, I mean... It's really not a downside, but it's this. The, the, I'm just saying the Xbox is solid. But I've been getting more into PC gaming now, and there's a lot more that you can do. But it's work. Like you got to have time to set it up and tweak them. I just now got control to run. Finally, I overclocked my GPU a little bit, and I got control to run in 1080p 60. DLSS with medium ray tracing and I mean it's on an old workstation I, I talked about it in another video it's just an old S20 it's an X58 I got it for like 130 bucks and put the 2070 super in it but I'm running control and it looks good with DLSS upscaling it really looks solid I mean it fuzzes it a little bit but if you're running on 4k it kind of fuzzes it into those other pixels and it really keeps the shimmering down you can run it in 720p and you can still see the shimmering, but it's, you can see it's abated to a point. Almost unnoticeable, especially if you run a higher res like 1080p. 1080p to 4K DLSS is awesome. I mean, it's awesome. And that's why so far I haven't bought the new systems yet, the PS5 and the uh, Series X. Even though I'm excited about them, there's just the backwards compatibility and all of that they're not tackling it like they only enhanced 130 games for the xbox one x which is a lot but i don't think it was done by the xbox um hardware designers it was done by the uh the people that make the games the developers so that's extra work for them they got to go through and smooth all the little hitches out and if that's your line of work i don't think it's a big deal they always start this track outside of the cockpit. It must be because this is just hard to do. I'll run this one from outside of the car, see how far I get. I do better inside uh, the driver's wheel there, the um, inside the car, cabin, driver's seat. Whoa! I just call it first person. First person view I do much better. See my car is already halfway ruined and I would have stopped. Oh, jeez. Why me? All right, we're going back to that other view. There it is. Okay, so I'm trying not to cuss here. You guys want to make fun of me because of the way I'm talking, but uh, it's um, it wasn't a cuss word. So there we go. I've gotten really good at not saying any bad words. Boy, a younger me would have just started cussing there. 
There's a time and a place, though. Like if, like, your neighbors hunt around your backyard when you went camping and stuff, yeah. That's when you can bring up the cuss words. With some strange attention. So here we go, around this corner. That's about a tight corner. You could easily over overrun that corner and run right into that wall. Especially while talking. But this game, it really does well with the physics when you're going up and over bumps, you know, grades and slope and all that. You kind of feel the tires dig in a little better and then let loose. They're really getting pretty good at these simulations. There's quite a number of forces at play, but they really, they get the main ones. It's a little bit like ray tracing. Like, no, you're not going to be able to calculate every every uh, molecule that you're looking at in your vision, but boy, can you pretty much estimate the majority of how it'll basically look. And that's how these uh, the physics is here. It's really pretty close to real racing as far as feel goes. I mean, it is a video game, but... It's easy to get immersed these days. It used to have to take a little bit of work. Even as a younger person, it would just take a little bit of work to get immersed. But nowadays, you can really, if you give it a, a nice big projection or you get into VR, you can get immersed. And you just take the fun and leave all the work behind. I'm sure there's a lot of work in NASCAR racing. So I had this video done once before, but I didn't like the audio. I went over some topics. But the audio was bad. I didn't have any background sound for the, the engine noise. It was just the mic and it wasn't coming. I was getting some background through the noise. It was, it was pretty bad. And I just thought, you know, I'm just going to redo the video. So here I am. But yeah, the PS5 and the Series X would be nice to have, and I will probably end up with both, just because I like the look of them. And I'm getting one of those HDMI switches in the mail where you just press a button. It's like a 4x4 four four matrix, and hopefully it works out, because I'm, I'm a big-time uh, refurbished and open-box buyer. I just, you know, I'm the type of person that... It's, it's weird. Though. It's just all human psychology. If it's open box, like, oh, you don't want that. But if you found it from somebody on the street and they said it was stolen, then people are like, ooh, like, oh, the good stuff, you know. I mean, depending on what neighborhood. Maybe not. Uh, but as a younger guy living where I was living, maybe, um, that would have been the case. So um, if you think about it, it's... Something someone sent back or they didn't want because it didn't work because they had the wrong cables. They didn't know you needed optical HDMIs. Or for whatever reason, they sent it back. Or they stole the remote out of it, sent it back and said the remote wasn't in it or whatever. But anyway, the 4x4 matrix switch HDMI, hopefully it works out for me. But that's going to be ultra convenient because I have a number of displays. And um, then if you have a number of sources... And you just don't really care about the money as much and you're just buying whatever you want. You can buy the Series X, the PS5, you can have an Xbox One X. Those are you can get those for like $175 right now on eBay used. And after Christmas they're gonna be even cheaper. $225 you can get one day, whatever day you looked, with no drawbacks, nothing wrong with it. Want $250 and you're gonna get a nice controller, all the cords and all that. I mean it's just that's extremely cheap considering they wanted $500 for it just a few years ago. But it's kind of like this mid-grade, mid-ground of support. It's the highest, best, but they supported it for 130 games, and then now they're moving on, and they may not want to develop for it. The developers may be like, well, yeah, that's cool, but it's got the old CPU, and 
I mean, just it just it's this strange middle ground, which they might all end up being at some point. If they come out with the next Xbox Series X Pro or X XX or the PS5 Pro, then the normal PS5 will be put into that strange area of game consoles as fast as the Xbox One X did. But anyway, with this Switch, it'll be fun because I'll be able to have any anything on anything. And you just press a button, there's like four HDMI ins and four outs, and I'm just going to be able to press a button. And I'm not bragging, but I'm just letting people know. I'm just talking because we're on the, the video here, and you're watching it. And that's um, going to make the gaming experience so much better. And it's anyone can buy one. Like, uh, there's a couple brands. I'm, I'm getting the Go Fanco, but there's another one called... Um, OREI, O-R-E-I, and I think those both will do both 4K and 1080p. So it doesn't matter what your in is, your input, and it doesn't matter what your output is, it's going to work. As long as it's 1080p and 4K, it doesn't do 720p or anything like that. If you're running 1080p displays and 4K displays and 1080p and 4K inputs, it will downscale to 1080p from 4K, and if it's 4K, it'll run it right through. So if you have a 4K source going to a 4K TV, it'll work. If it's going to a 1080p TV, it'll downscale it to 1080p so you can see it. If it's 1080p, it'll run 1080p to a 4K display, and it'll just display in 1080p because the 4K displays will, will kick it down to 1080p for you and display it. So it's just going to, I mean, my computer will be on it. I'll be able to have the Xbox. PS4 Pro, I'm not getting the PS5 yet, but if I did, I would have a slot for it. You know, if I want to do retro gaming, I could have another Switch. It could be a 4-in-1, and then it could just go to one of the inputs. And I would have maybe four retro consoles on that one. I could switch those to the one. And then I would be able to tell that one which monitor to put it on. I mean, it's just so cool. And I hope it works, but I have a feeling it's going to be finicky. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, gotta start, uh, I always make sure I drink some water before I do this uh, YouTubing, so. I'm like those guys at the podium. So I did not notice what this is. What track is this? It doesn't seem as tight as Bristol. I don't know. I didn't look. I should have. But all these NASCARs are always like an oval or some type of a shape. like some ambient lighting going through the cloud there it's kind of that started with Nintendo 64 to hide the pop in they would just kind of fuzz everything put in a cloud and I was looking at that the other day um, I'm using Vorpex which is a 3d injector for regular gaming like it works with some games and it kind of makes them look like VR and you can put on a headset and zoom way in and it has a th you have to set the perspective right or it'll make you sick so a lot of people have found that they don't like it but if you set it right it'll work good and you really need to set it right I mean you can feel it in your forehead like if you mess with the eyes funny make them way far apart it just doesn't even register right you can easily get a headache you could easily if you play it and some of the games the the perspective is not correct in every scene. Like the game, you can set the game to the correct perspective, but some of the menus will be off. Like everything's tiny or big or something because they weren't worried about it being detectable. So it doesn't match the game necessarily. Maybe the bike is half size or or giant. Like sometimes it... And it just has to do with the way it's coming across in 3D. The Z factor, the Z value of everything could be off, but it doesn't matter in flat screen because it never registers as three-dimensional. So there's issues with it and you have to be able to accept it. And that's what computers are about, is doing whatever the heck you want to do. If you want to put in a mod, look at this, I'm finally getting past this guy. So that difficulty, it went up. I would have had been past him on the first lap and if I had, had it on regular difficulty like I, I just had, I put it up said 20% harder, so I, I should have put it up too. I almost did. 
But that's the thing about computers, you know, uh, they're variable, but they allow you to do things you just can't do in the consoles. But boy, you got to work for it in more ways than one because they're more expensive. And then if you got to set something up, it takes the time to do it. So, I mean, it's something everybody knows, but I was always kind of a console gamer and I got away from the PCs and the gaming on PCs. I've always had a PC, but I just kind of swore off gaming on PCs because I had had some some bad experiences. It was like when Halo 1 was out and I had to map the controls. I don't really like to map controls. They should be defaults. Like some things need to be default. And since then, and I had no idea this was kind of evolving, was Xbox is building into Windows 10. I think that's why people like Windows 10. And maybe maybe 8 was that way, but I was always on XP and then I had uh, 95 for a while. And then I had... Um, Windows 7, but even my Windows 7 computer was not Xbox compatible feeling. Like it didn't have the the game mode and the games were not set up with default controllers. But now you can just get a controller and get a Bluetooth adapter and it'll just run and the controls are already defaulted, completely mapped to your controller already. And it's the ones you would find on any Xbox and a very similar one you would find on PlayStation. So if you hand it to somebody, they're going to know how to play. That was the problem with PCs is you'd hand your controller to somebody and they just look at you like, you play this way? You mean you jump with Y? Why would you do that? That feels weird, you know? And you just it just made the whole thing kind of awkward because it was so personalized that um, you couldn't share a little. It just made it kind of awkward. And then I don't really like the mouse and keyboard. Now I might shoot myself in the foot in the future if that comes around to being something I do like doing. But right now I'm not very good at it and it kind of gives me like carpal tunnel on my middle finger. On the controller you gotta like press W for forward. And you can't move in any direction. You go forward or diagonal or right. And um, I was having that problem with Vorpex um, and playing control, I was playing control, but their game pad mapping just maps you to the keyboard so and it pulses it kind of strange like if you move slowly it doesn't move slowly it pulses like the keyboard and slowly moves you and and your view does that and in VR it makes you sick so somehow they um, they got the the controller mapping now it's not so bad if you just play the game without VR but in VR and I'm not sure if they did that on the, the developers did that for control or if Vorpex is having an issue with it where it's it can't do the gamepad so it just kind of uh, emulates it through the keyboard I'm not sure but she runs forward and she runs completely diagonal and all to the side and that's it but if you play the game without if you just play it on like especially like a console but if you play even on the computer without the um, VR, it'll map the controller like a gamepad, and you can use all the directions. So it's little things like that that kind of make, it steers people to consoles. It's like, why is that an issue? And and then if, if there's anything that people have to iron out over and over, like, you know, there's 50,000 people that got this game, and 50,000 people had to remap their controller. And you know, and you start adding up that time. Okay, I spent 25 minutes, and it's still not right. I still have to do this button. Times that times 50,000 people. And, you know, you're at like, uh, what is that? Um, you know, 1,333. 13, I mean, it's just it's a big number of hours that were completely wasted out of the economy doing something over and over. That, you know, they want to automate everything and make it super fast and cheap and everything until it comes to your time on something that could be done by a developer. And they're just like, eh. and then if they, the developers should really say, if if the customer needs to fix this, how much time, how many people, and what's the number, and what's our number? If I give my guy a uh, hundred bucks and he spends five hours, and puts a default gamepad um, map in, how much time is that going to save our society, and how much more efficient are we all going to be? And then people are like, oh, you were talking about efficiency, you know, you must have problems or something, but. It's, you know, if you're an aeronautical engineer, there's no problem with efficiency. There is no problem with it at all. 
if you look at the front of an airplane it's round it's aerodynamic the wings the everything is is weighed against weight and power and efficiency because any less loss of efficiency is a loss in range and then you got to you can't go across the ocean and there's just drawbacks But uh, you don't need me to tell you that. Oh no! Oh, it's just just laying on the brakes. Well, at least I didn't cuss, right? I do know how to. Not during the holidays. That's no, I don't think so. Or the New Year. I guess that could be my resolution: don't cuss, even when you're not on YouTube. Wouldn't that be something? No matter what, boy. But you gotta wonder what kind of uh, persona, like, well, how would you come off to people? It's a guy who doesn't cuss. I don't know, I guess I had a uh, grandfather or some one of them, and he never cussed. Just didn't. Never learned the words. I think he's probably been cussed at. I don't see how he couldn't be at some point. You know? Ooh, duh. whoa, no. There we go. Okay, come back on there. Nope. Yeah, I didn't cuss again. Okay. So this is a cool track. I've seen this on Project Cars 2. Not running. I think it was this track. Very similar, if not at Speed Bill. That's a dead giveaway. Project Cars 2 in VR is a place to be. And you don't realize it when you first start playing it. But after a while, it grows on you. This game does too. I've actually, for flat screen gaming, this game is really fun. I like it. Physics are good on it. And the controller implementation is good. And the immersion is good. And the sounds are good. The sounds have got to be good. And they, they end up being a little bit like... Um, like a fad, like a trending sound. But you would think that there's a sound that the, the cars make, and that's the end of the story. Like they're honing in on the actual sound. But you kind of get these sounds where they, they kind of just took like a studio um, style and put it on there. Like, well, that's our style for this year. If you go through like F1 games, you can listen to the sound of the F1 cars from 2016, 2017. And they do sound different each year. That They do change the F1 cars. But if you go listen to them in person, I don't think they're going to change so much. I mean, some of them are just... Some of the games have very bad sounds for the cars. And they usually give you a good deal on it. If you go on Steam or something, and it's 20 25 bucks, expect to have the sounds of the cars sound kind of dumb. But this game, it sounds pretty good. And there's so many different kinds of cars. And this really sounds like a stock car. I know you've heard it. Just watching NASCAR, kind of like in the old days, it, they used to have the broadcast TV, and you couldn't control what was on the TV. You wouldn't. There wasn't in demand anything on demand. You know now everything's on demand. YouTube's on demand. Uh, a lot of the streaming services for videos to watch are on demand, and it's just an on-demand world. And it used to be get up Saturday morning cartoons, and they'd have the Thriller double feature and maybe they would have something at five o'clock you know and you don't get like excited well it's five o'clock something's got to be on and they would have nascar racing and baseball but boy the world sure has opened up since it's like i can't believe that that's what all that that was if you look at how many views nascar is getting now with on demand and compare that to what everything else is getting maybe they made the wrong choice as to what to put on maybe that was a formula what they wanted us to watch you know, or what's, what was, I think it's just usually what's trending. It was trending and nobody changed it yet. Because they're, um, but you know, me personally, I like to watch like RC hobby stuff. I think everybody has their own feed, you know, you get your own feed. It's kind of strange they call it a feed. What are you trying to say? I would use a different word. Just because, you know, feed is like grain for cattle. I don't identify as cattle, but... Um, I would just pick a different word. 
I guess there's feed on paper. You know, you feed the paper in. Or you, I guess there's a news feed. So I guess it's all in uh, this is a, a personal uh, self-image thing. But um, yeah, I just would have used a different word. But uh, RC hobby stuff, I like... Um, just all kind. I could I could list it off, but you know we all have our own our own likes and dislikes. But it's nice that we're able to see what we want to see now, rather than whatever's coming up on. But you know maybe people were renting a lot of VHS back then, and we weren't getting so much VHS, you know. But there was only so much special interest stuff at the VHS store, and then you go there, and some guys you know huddling over by these curtains, and he comes out slow, and he's got like five, di you know, like five VHSs, and you're like, oh my gosh, hands are twenty bucks. Be kind, please rewind. And the really crazy thought is that's the era we're in now. That's the era you're always in. When you look back 20 years, what are we going to have in 20 years? That makes the Xbox One X and, you know, the mic that I'm using and the, everything we're using right now just kind of seem dumb. I mean, it's not dumb, but it's just, it's obsolete. Just don't take my candy canes. That's all I'm saying. As long as there's a box of 12 candy canes at the store, I'll be fine. So I don't really I, I don't really feel like a Chevy guy. I've had Chevys though. I actually had a box truck for a while with a uh, 292. And I was going to put a 305 in it. And I had it dipped all kinds of stuff, but the economy dips with it. I had it uh, hot dipped and painted and all kinds of stuff. I ended up selling it off cuz the truck was having some other problems and I just got rid of the motor, but it was uh built by me it was pretty nice it's it's kind of intimidating it's you get in there and and you're redoing everything and you have the the lifters and you kind of want to put them back in the slot you took it out of and if you miss one and maybe this one the other slot and it's kind of makes you worry a little bit when you put a motor together is it going to fire because i'm i'm buttoning this thing up and that's it i mean it's and then put it in before you can test it and that's rough because if you get it in and you have a problem say you're water pump or not water pump but the oil filter or oil pump in the bottom starts to fall out and go back into the oil pan i mean there's just there's just worry unless you're an engine builder and you've done it before well that was a gm that i had it was a good car it was a good box truck big grooming grooming box truck grumman i think it's grumman Big aluminum truck. It's kind of like the um, mail truck, except a little bit bigger. But boy, it would guzzle some gas. I think I was getting like 12 or 15 miles a gallon. I'd baby it and get 15. And if you have to go like an hour and a half or something, it starts adding up. Like you're talking about eating steak or having... McDoubles, depending on what you can do about that. So, especially seasonal work, it can change you. It can change a man, seriously. I guess, uh, kind of adapt. Get older and start adapting. I didn't see what racetrack this is. Playing on a projector and one of my lights kind of like blocks the projection on the bottom a little bit, unfortunately, and I think that's right about where they say where it, which track it is. I noticed this thing, um, if you look at the speed, it says 150 miles an hour, I think that is. I don't think that's kilometers. This is like an American sport. But at 193, the controller starts shaking. 
Like this is smooth right here, but if I get up to 193, the controller will start to vibrate. So it's kind of strange, like who, who decided on 193? And then all of a sudden you, you get a handshake, or the, your hands start shaking. Oh well, why worry? It's funny, you know, video games, they really started with, like, earlier than my generation, but I was like Atari. I mean, I remember ColecoVision was in my childhood and all that. Like, it was, I was pretty young. I was like, I don't know, maybe four or something, but uh, Atari came out and uh, an NES. NES was like a huge drop. They, I remember they were at Kmart and they just had pallets of them, NES. And I remember uh, Genesis, we went to Toys R Us and it was saying, power up, power up. And they had the TurboGrafx-16. I think it was a little bit cheaper. I don't know, actually, looking back, I think they were both 199 And they had Bonk. I think you can play those games on the computer. I don't know if it's legit or not. I, sometimes you have to have the system and then you download the game from the system. I know the uh, Simu emulator is like, like the Wii U, but it's C-E-M-U or something, Simu. But you have to have the Wii U and then you can download the games with the program and it'll uh, put them on your computer and then you can run them in 4K, like Zelda Breath of the Wild. I think there's uh, pirated ways to do it, but the best way to do it is to um, have the system. But I think you can play Bonk. They may have uh, sold the rights to someone. I haven't looked at it, but... Um, it's interesting. That was a big game that I didn't get to play on the TurboGrafx-16 because I didn't get that one. I got the Genesis. Paid for with my own cash. Actually, I split it with my brothers. It was uh, quite a toy at the time. The graphics were like out of this world. We couldn't believe it. Like, man, look at those big sprites. It was all about sprite size. And then some of them started doing, like, uh, scaling. There was no scaling before that. You know, what do they call that? Rasterization or something? There was none of that. It was all just a sprite, and it could uh, flash different tech, like, different versions of itself, and it looked like someone was walking. I'll bet those were a lot easier to develop for. I actually don't know, though. I don't know anything about development. You know, I can do a little bit of CAD, but even still, the CAD program is already written, so... I mean, it counts a little bit. Boy, CAD in and outside of the workplace is two different things, that's for sure. Sun setting. Get ready to drive in the dark. So here we are, Daytona. Daytona International Speedway. Okay, I can read that. Eight laps. Now, if I had more competition, this would probably be a little bit more fun to watch, but... Somebody's got to win, right? This is uh, number three. Is that Dale Earnhardt or something? I can't remember which. Uh, I have the shirt. I think it's Dale Earnhardt. He likes to run people off the road after he gets ran off the road. Ooh, have some paint. Another good year. Probably didn't even need to let off there. This is the classic track right here. Everybody knows Daytona. Daytona and Bristol stick out in my mind. One of these corners you gotta let off just a little bit, I think. Maybe it's that next one. 
It's just a little too sharp. I'm going to let off right there. I don't know. I might have been able to just stay on. It almost seems like a non-competition if you just get to stay on the gas. Like then you're just basically running bots and seeing which one will, which one's designed the best. But if you notice, I'm way faster, so it's kind of not really a, very much of a competition. Because we're all running flat out and I'm gaining on everybody. Oh, gotcha. I was just going to look at him, but when I pressed the other stick, it made me run into him a little bit. That's where VR is cool, because you can, especially if you have a wheel, you're grabbing your wheel and you can see what's going on, and then you can look over at people. And it's going to be awesome. In another 20 years, VR is just going to be sweet. I think it's not profitable, and it's one of those things that are a labor of love. Like, if you're for profit and like Microsoft, they they put some chips in, but they're they're not all in because if you're all in and people don't want it, then it's rough. And Google just got rid of their Daydream program. I, I don't know exactly what all that entails, but it was like the Google Daydream headset, and then they had like a set of protocols for making VR content. But really, the cell phone. VR headsets are not the same as a regular VR. The it's this it's just like the 3D movies. The aspect ratio it's not the aspect ratio. The perspective was wrong, especially in 3D movies. The perspective was from the camera, and you're sitting back from that and looking at it, and it just doesn't line up. Looks like I'm in first place now. So I'm going over 193. So my controller is shaking smooth until 193 but cell phone VR is a nice way to see if you would like to go in that direction but it is not really the same as looking through a Vive or an Oculus or a PSVR or any of the newer headsets like the Valve Index or the Reverb or any of the other ones any that I forgot um, Windows Mixed Reality that's where the Microsoft really did put a few chips in as they did mixed reality. And they were actually very value-oriented headsets and a lot of the uh, electronics companies made one. Lenovo made one. I mean, it was really a go, really. It was like, here's our headset. The Samsung made one. Dell made one. I actually think the Dell one's neat because it's a good value. I mean, it's a 1440p. A lot of times they want to have more resolution in the headset, but if you're computer can't drive it there's no point in having those pixels and super sampling really does something it really looks good super sampled so if you can render in a little bit higher resolution than your headset you're still gonna get detail it kinda works like those pixel shift projectors you know as the as you turn your head the pixels turn on and off and they will give an impression of a higher res and that's kinda similar to the pixel shift projectors if you can't read something in VR and then you move your head like diagonally a little bit, all of a sudden it cleans right up and you can see it. But if you move, if you stop moving, then it looks like a, uh, like there's bugs all over it and they're going all over. Because the, uh, the resolution is too low and it's just, just being not good enough. But the, uh, the super sampling, I'm a fan of. I'm a fan of mismatched resolutions because a lot of times it ends up having a bit of an anti-aliasing effect, whether it be under too too low of a resolution or too high. And I think that's why the original Xbox was 900p. I don't. They didn't really explain themselves, but I think it's better than a completely matched 1080p. It would probably be better to be 1200p and then display on 1080. But I think it has kind of an anti-aliasing effect because the uh, resolution is different from from the output res, the render res. So there's a lot of that now. And super sampling is cool. And uh, DLSS is awesome. That's really neat. That's, that's kind of why I got a graphics card before one of the newer consoles is basically because of DLSS. Ray tracing I like. 
it's neat and you do see it, but it's it can be subtle and it cannot it's not necessarily game changing. But I was looking in control and there was parts where I turned on just medium and then I was still able to keep my refresh and you could see the ray tracing like on a wall that was directly perpendicular or whatever you want to say while it was shining on it it would be lit and then the one around the corner that would not get any light from this light bulb was dark with ray tracing on but if i turn ray tracing on this was glowing like it was lit and this one was glowing like it was lit and um medium ray tracing is nice you get that original that first shot of light but then they have ambient light, which is the higher ray tracing. So I think they're going trace to the first point and then trace off of that also. And that actually burns a lot of, of uh, resources. So at first I didn't like medium ray tracing, but now, now I'm thinking medium is good because you're getting that first main portion of ray tracing. Like the light goes here and it either goes over here or it doesn't. And then the second, I believe, the second, uh, the highest ray tracing is now what's that light going to do? It's like an ambient diffused light. So, um, yeah, medium ray tracing on control is cool. Keep your frame rate up and you can really see it. But it's it's not like the game doesn't, it's not like it, it doesn't exist. I got first place. It's not like it, the game is completely redone because of ray tracing. But DLSS, it can really increase performance and it comes off as a very tangible improvement because you might be at 42 FPS and you know what 42 is like. It's like it's, it's if you go into a corner, you'll get 60 and it'll look really good. But then when you're panning, it's jittery. And I really don't like that. And that's part of the reason I didn't like computers for so long also. But now they have V-Sync. So these are all advancements since the last time I was into computers. V-Sync will clean it up and uh, they time each frame with when your your display is going to need one. You know that probably if you're into this. So um, I'm not buying that. If it was a Camaro. I should have bought that. I'm going to buy it. 30 grand. Okay. Yeah, we'll take that. But uh, DLSS, it seemed like that's really going in the right direction. Like ray tracing, yeah, maybe in another 10 years. But DLSS, and I can see why they're doing them both because DLSS frees up resources for ray tracing. But man, when you can get to 60 FPS and you still feel like you have a pretty decent picture, you're not getting the shimmering. It just feels like a win. You know, and I'm running a pixel shift projector and it's it's actually technically a 1080p, but it's it's shifting around and changing what it's displaying to to show and convey a 4k image so all of it is just saves you money i mean you can just and it, it allows you to do things that you couldn't do otherwise and pretty soon there'll be 4k chips in the projectors but then it'll be an 8k image that you can pixel shift up to and that'll be awesome even if it's 1440p and you can pixel shift up to 2500 or something or 3K or something, something close to, well, not 3K, but say uh, it's a 1440p and it would shift to 6K and you could take 8K signal and do 6K and it would be super sampled. That would be a sweet, especially if it was affordable. That would be awesome. But those are, uh, those are some of the things I've been thinking. And um, I just wanted to say one last time, if you have ordered something from me on my eBay store, um, the 20 day shipping time is out of my control and uh, it will be a memory for myself and you and uh, there's really nothing I can do and um, you always have eBay protections in case things are just so bad but uh, I'm waiting on things myself and um, I guess we're just gonna have to see how it plays out as we just uh, we just don't know and now they're talking about giving out uh, checks again so who knows what all. But anyway, that's going to be my video for today. This was Forza Motorsport 7 on the Xbox One X. I was playing in 4K60. The recording is in 1080p60. If there's any juddering, it's because of my recording setup. It's super smooth on here. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Tune in next time. I'll see you in the next video.